So uh, welcome, thank you for being here. Uh, what I want to do is just kind of talk with you about the capstone uh, project, um, the process that we use to write and produce it, um, some things that we're doing a little bit differently this year than we've done in years past, um, and then kind of take any of your questions. So I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna show you a few things um, as we're talking. So um, this is the syllabus. I'll make sure everyone has a copy of this uh, like now, you know, tonight or tomorrow. Um, that way you can see kind of what's expected, what's coming. Um, the reason I like to do this before the semester starts is because we really hit the ground running once we get there. Um, you know, you've been in this program long enough to know that we move very quickly. Uh, the, the capstone, I think, moves just as quickly with, with I think, a high level of intensity. Um, I don't say that to scare you, but I do want to prepare you that, you know, we are going to be working pretty hard, pretty fast. Um, and, you know, it's going to be a, a good solid effort to the, the finish so that all of you can walk across that stage in December. Um, so the capstone, for those of you who are not familiar, is a full scale policy analysis or program evaluation. Those are methodologies you learned in MPA 602. Um, what we're going to be doing, so in 602, you did the worksheets, that series of worksheets that kind of looked at a problem or an organization, um, and it was very kind of guided and um, prescribed. Here, it's going to be a similar process, slightly less prescribed, because um, as you start getting into kind of real world application of this methodology, you'll find some things don't quite fit neatly into the outline provided. Um, but you will be exercising all of the skills that you've generated and gained through this program. So um, I'm going to move kind of right into the assignments, the syllabus stuff. You know, you've seen all of this before. Um, one thing I will say, well, you know, what, I'm gonna come back to the, to the deadlines thing. Um, but the way we do this project, and it's probably better to show you the schedule. So um, as in a lot of your courses, the, the capstone paper is written in pieces. So, you know, first week, second week, um, you'll be writing kind of your intro, and then you'll get quick feedback on that, right? So, so we'll, we'll be reading your capstone, giving you very quick, very detailed feedback on that section, please write the capstone all in the same document. So what tends to happen is people will write, okay, here's the intro in one document, and then there's chapter two in another document, and chapter three in another document. Um, what that does is it breaks it all up, and we kind of lose that through line. Um, by doing it all in the same document, we can keep things very parallel and keep it all kind of part of the same construction. Um, so you're expected to take the feedback that you get on the first part, make your edits, you know, make your changes to the first part and then write the second part. The reason we do it that way is because it's very easy for some small error that shows up in say chapter one to have ripple effects throughout the paper and then become a much bigger error when you get to kind of the end. Um, and so we try to catch those mistakes early. We try to give you feedback so that you can um, make improvements as you go. We want this document to be something that you can be proud of, um, that, that, you know, that actually does make big positive impacts in the world around us. Um, so you'll see, you know, we'll, we'll first ask you to kind of just give us a personal statement. What are you thinking about? What are you interested in? Um, you'll do a draft introduction and all of these things are drafts, right? So, um, uh, placeholders are okay, not encouraged, but okay. You know, for example, you know, if you um, know that there's something missing that you need to address, you can leave a placeholder in there. Um, but, you know, you'll see that, like the first week we'll do a draft introduction. Um, you'll have two weeks to do a literature and background section. Uh, these are kind of, um, you know, problem definition and uh, background. Um, Try to think of it in terms of when you're doing your, your problem definition, you're specifying the local context. So a lot of folks deal with a policy problem that exists, for example, in Delaware, um, you know, or your home state, wherever that is. Um, tell us about the problem as it exists in the place that you're focusing on, and then bring in literature, kind of nationwide or international literature, 
um, about that issue largely, right? So we're going from specific to broad um, so that we kind of bring in the best practices and the best knowledge that exists. Um, and then you'll set up your analysis plan in week five. Remember the analysis plan was kind of one of the harder worksheets in MPA 602. Um, this is where you're setting those evaluative criteria and then defining and defining and defining, right? So that you're specifying exactly what it is you're looking for. Uh, you have two weeks to do the analysis. The chances are where you're gonna be getting some feedback on the analysis plan that is going to need some revision that's okay because you have two weeks to implement the analysis. Uh, so once you do the analysis, you'll be coming up with some kind of policy recommendation. And this is largely where we stopped in MPA 602. Now we get into implementation and financial planning. So MPA 605, you know, if you remember, if you've taken that, is a lot about implementation planning. Um, and MPA 603 is a lot about financial planning. So again, we're bringing in skills from those courses. If you haven't taken MPA 605 yet, don't worry, because I'll be providing you with the content relevant from that class. Um, so kind of providing you with the materials that you need to know in order to be able to write an effective implementation plan. Uh, by week 10, you should have pretty much a full draft of your capstone ready. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be polished. Um, but it will be basically the, the meat of your, your capstone paper. Uh, you'll be getting, again, kind of more feedback, more feedback, and then we send it off to your committee. And I'm going to talk about the committee in a few minutes. Um, your committee is going to be taking a few weeks to, uh, about a week to read it, um, and then you'll give a presentation and defense, right? So the presentation and defense, it's a 20-minute presentation. Um, you know, you're telling us about what you did, uh, in your capstone, your conclusions, how you arrived at them, that sort of thing. And then your committee is gonna be asking you some questions about it. Um, they're gonna ask you to defend your work. Um, it's, it, it sounds scary, it really should not be scary. Uh, by the time you get to this wow. phase, the work is going to be very, very, very strong, right? We're not gonna let it go to your committee if we think you're not gonna be successful. They're gonna come back with some feedback probably some revisions. They're usually fairly small, um, you know, and then you have a few weeks to make those revisions. And then we're basically doing paperwork for the last couple of weeks of the semester. Um, so we move very quickly, very early on. And then I think you can expect the workload to lighten up a little bit by the time we get to weeks 10, 11, 12, um, because then you're kind of just taking that victory lap. Okay. All right. So uh, the committee, uh, part of, of this process is selecting a, a committee for your capstone. Your committee is gonna be your advisor, right? So that's either gonna be Dr. Blackston or myself. Um, and then you'll have to select two more members. Uh, at least one of them should be a faculty member from Delaware State University. The other one could be a faculty member but uh, could be a faculty member from Dell State, could be a faculty member outside of this university, say at another university that you studied um, with, or could be a practitioner in the field with at least an MPA or a master's degree. Okay, so again, I'm gonna repeat that. You need your advisor, either Dr. Blackson or myself, one faculty member from Delaware State University, and then um, either a Dell State faculty member a faculty member of a different university or a practitioner in the field with at least a master's degree. Um, start Dr. thinking- Burke, I just have a, a quick question. Yes. Yes. Does the faculty member from another university also have to have an MPA? They don't have to have an MPA, but they should have at least a master's. Master's and MPA. Okay. Yeah, it, so the reason, the reason we don't specify that too, too much is because our work is so interdisciplinary. Um, I think within this, uh, this group that's here, uh, we've got folks who are very into education policy. We've got folks who are into criminal justice policy. Um, I, think there, I think there's at least one environmental policy person in the room. Um, so so there, it, it's very interdisciplinary. So you know, uh, someone with an expertise in any of those things could be a, a valuable part of your committee. Um, start thinking about who you want that to be now. Um, start making some outreach. 
you know, just kind of start writing to people or calling people up and saying, hey, would you mind serving as a reader on my committee? Um, if you need help or, or would like to be introduced to somebody, uh, feel free to reach out and I will help you with that introduction. Okay, so the thing that we're doing differently this year, previously um, I was the capstone advisor for everybody and I was kind of the, the primary reader on everyone's capstones. Uh, a good problem that we have in this program is that we're getting so big that I can't be that person for everybody. Um, and fortunately, we have someone who I think you all know, uh, Dr. Blackston, is going to be uh, taking half of you. So um, Dr. Blackston will be advising half of the capstones. I'll be taking the other half. Um, Dr. Blackston has read, gosh, I don't know, a dozen capstones uh, from this program and has always provided good advice on all of them. Uh, so, you know, you're in very good hands. Uh, I don't know about you, Dr. Blackston, if someone selects you as their capstone, I would be happy to serve as a second reader. Um, that, would be, that would be fine. Yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, you, if you choose to go that way, um, mm -hmm. you could have, uh, you know, half your committee or two thirds of your committee figured out already. Right. Um, so, so that's why Dr. Blackston is here, um, you know, and, and I'm really looking forward to kind of uh, having you work with him, work with me, whomever, you know, however you feel most comfortable. Um, some of you may be gravitating one way or another. That's great. Um, sometimes we'll be able to honor that request. Sometimes we won't. Um, just it, it really is a matter of numbers, right? We just want to have to make sure the numbers uh, work. Um, again, I promise, you know, Dr. Blackston, I trust with, you know, my writing, um, you know, he's, he's a, a great human being, great advisor. If you've taken MPA 503 with him, you know, right, he's a solid human being, uh, just good human um, with, with very sharp and strong uh, re reading and uh, uh, writing and evaluating skills, you know, and he, he doesn't pull punches, right? He, he'll tell you straight. Uh, yeah. You know, what needs to be fixed and, and, and yeah. worked on. Um, Dr. Blackson, would you like to say anything? No, I just um, am very honored to work with each and every one of the, whether the group that I have and uh, actually working with all of you. I'm always available, not just to the group that I have, but to all of you in this program. As Dr. Burke has said, um, you guys have put in a great deal of work and um, uh, I'm, I'm here to assist you in getting to, uh, to the end. Um, uh, Dr. Burke is uh, probably one of the most dedicated, talented individuals I've met at Delaware State, and I'm fortunate to work with him. And so when he asked me to do this, I was more than happy. As he has stated, I've, I've taught um, uh, MPA 503 for a number of years. Uh, prior to that, I, I have uh, extensive, uh, just to give you a little background, extensive history in educational policy and criminal justice policy. I, I was, uh, I worked in K to 12 where I would, I pretty much did everything, uh, including being a principal, uh, uh, a district administrator and uh, a state elected um, official. Um, so I dealt with a great deal of policy. The other piece before coming to Delaware State, I was a CEO of Vision Quest, which is a juvenile justice program for juveniles. And I also led a sex trafficking unit to bring people back into society after being victimized. So, I, you know, I bring, a, I bring um, somewhat of, of, of some talent to help you get to where you are. Dr. Burke has helped me in a great deal and I'm, I'm here to support you. Uh, one of the things that I, I do want to mention that uh, he did mention, and um, uh, I'm a constant communicator and you'll always get the truth from me. And uh, I think as we move on and you, as you prepare um, for your careers out in the world, you'll know that Dr. Burke has prepared the MPA program uh, significant where you'll, you're uh, ready job, you're ready day one for whatever you're doing, whether you're in the workforce now or going into the workforce, but this program will prepare you. And it also will open some doors for you um, to those individuals you'd like to get connected to. So I'm just very excited. You always get the best of me and you always get the truth from me. You know, and so sometimes it may not be as pleasant, but it all would be honest. And then when you leave this program, you'll know that you've earned your degree and you've got it in a really, really solid program that Dr. Burke has developed. 
Thank you. And so I would actually want to build on a few of those points, Dr. Blackston. Um, so part of our process is that we do review your, your submissions, right? We read them very critically. And a lot of the time, you know, so if you've worked with me on, on kind of heavy revision type stuff, um, you know, you'll see that we make track changes or comments in your Word document. We do ask you to submit Word documents because they allow for track changes and comments. Um, sometimes when you're getting critical feedback on something as significant as a capstone, it can really feel like you're being attacked. All right. I, I've been there, right? I've gotten, I've gotten papers, you know, my master's thesis, my, my doctoral dissertation back with lots of red in them, right? Yeah. Lots, of, lots of track changes, lots of comments. Um, it's all part of the process of, of, of developing this work. It's always done in the spirit of collaboration. And right. so it's never meant to be critical. It's well, it's meant to be critical, but not negatively critical, right? It's, it's meant to be, uh, uh, supportive. We're not here to tear you down. We're not trying to knock you down. We're not trying to, you know, uh, make you feel bad about anything. Um, sometimes though, I know that when you open that document and you see all the red and you see all the comments, it can really feel discouraging. The point is really to, we want your work to be everything that it deserves. So, you know, you are going to see lots of feedback. Um, please try to keep in mind that it is all constructive. Um, to that end, uh, so I want to share with you the capstone rubric. So this is how the capstones are graded. Um, one of these gets submitted with all of the paperwork for your, your graduate uh, application. Um, so these are all program uh, learning objectives. Um, so all of, and, and you can see those learning objectives. Um, all of these are ways that we are assessed. So, you know, your success is our success. Um, you know, we report all of this data to the university one, you know, as evidence that you have earned a master's degree, but two, as evidence that, you know, we're, we're you know, giving students the skills um, that, that we say we are. So this is important for you. It's important for us. We take it very seriously. So um, these are the skills that we're committed to for the capstone. This, this is how you're going to be graded. Uh, so research design, you'll remember this from MPA 504. Um, you know, this is about making sure that you're setting up research in such a way that you're going to successfully be able to answer your questions. Um, research conduct means, means doing that research with fidelity, right? Making sure that you're doing it uh, the way that you said you were, right? With, with full extent of, of rigor and, and effort, okay? Um, interpretation making sure that the conclusions you draw at the end and the recommendations you make follow logically from the research that you did. Uh, the reason I wanna stress on this so much, um, when we do this kind of work, right? Policy analysis, uh, uh, we're dealing with real problems that exist in the world. And you know we have a lot of feelings about those problems. And sometimes our policy research, if we follow it, correctly, we design it right, follow it right. Sometimes it's gonna tell us things that we don't wanna hear, right? And we have to report even if we don't wanna hear it. Um, sometimes it's going, you know, so there's a, a tendency in place sometimes and not, not necessarily here, but just kind of in, in policy making in general. People advance a policy and then they try to justify it. Mm -hmm right? We start with the research and then recommend a policy based on the research. Right. That's why this criterion is so important. Um, written communication, you've all seen this rubric hundreds of times. Um, it's really important. Uh, this is one that, that Dr. Blackston and I, I think are going to be um, probably a pain in your butt about. Uh, you know, I, I take it seriously. Dr. Blackston takes it seriously. Um, you know, we want to make sure we're matching the right kind of professional tone, uh, really double checking proofreading, making sure they're, you know, we're, we're free of grammatical errors um, and, and um, uh, you know, 
typing, you know, just typographical errors, grammatical, uh, making sure, you know, we're, we're matching, matching the proper tone, proper uh, writing for the proper audience, um, just making sure our writing is really, really solid. Um, oral communication. So you will be giving a presentation. And to give an effective presentation, you want to be able to make sure that you are conveying information um, in the best possible way. I am not a great speaker. <laughs> Dr. Blackston is a great speaker. <laughs> and so, yeah, it, I mean, you give speeches, what, like, like once or twice a, a week? Like you're, yeah, you're I'm, I'm giving one tomorrow, actually. <laughs> uh, I don't do that. Nobody wants to hear me talk. Um, so, you know, we, we will be kind of encouraging you to kind of build that presentation skill. Um, and then, of course, API citations. We use APA, you know, you've been practicing APA citations throughout this program. Um, it's really important to get that right. Not only because we wanna see it right, but because this is, you know, academic writing and we're held to a very high standard, standard. in terms of citations. Um, the rest of your score will come from a reflection, um, uh, basically kind of reflect, it's a short, very short piece, just kind of, um, talking a little bit about the process of doing the capstone and, and your experience with it. Um, and then uh, this professionalism score, this is basically uh, the sum of your, the, I should say the average of your submissions in Blackboard. So each week in Blackboard for each product, you'll be getting a score. Um, usually you're gonna get, you know, if everything is in on time, um, and to a sufficient standard, you know, you're going to get full, full marks for everything. The times that people don't get full marks is if it's late or, you know, they kind of just phoned it in and didn't really, you know, feel like writing that week and kind of gave us something uh, that you may not think is up to your standards. Um, so that's kind of how you're scored. You have to get an A or a B on the capstone to pass it. Um, I know that that sounds kind of scary, but... Um, you have us, right? You have Dr. Blackston, you have myself guiding you throughout the process. If you're willing to put in the effort and work with us, we are going to make sure you get through it, okay? Um, we, have, we do have people who don't finish the capstone in a semester. Sometimes it's because, you know, well, in, in a really good case, we had someone actually get a grant um, they submitted a grant and got uh, uh, some, some financial support to do some really neat research on um, disability finance, which is really, really cool. Um, sometimes, you know, we're all, we're all adults, something terrible happens, you know, uh, someone gets sick, worse, you know, something, something happens in a person's life and they can't, you know, they can't match the pace. Um, so sometimes, you know, if something like that happens, we have a conversation, you know, maybe you're not going to be able to finish the capstone this semester. There's a process for deferring to the next semester. Um, it's not the end of the world, but it is something that can happen. Sometimes in very few cases, we have someone who kind of just runs out of steam. All right. Also, you know, we're going to work with you, but it, you know, we can't just kind of make it up, right? We can't make up a grade. We can't, um, you know, just pass you. The work really has to be there. Um, you saw the pacing, right? You saw the schedule. Um, it moves really quickly. And by the time we get to um, early November, the product really has to be just about done. Um, so, you know, it's really important that we get there. The reason for that is you get a lot of feedback. We need time to be able to give you that feedback and it needs to be a product that grows over time and gets sharper over time. If a person tries to, you know, maybe doesn't submit the first couple assignments on time and then tries to make it all up in like the end of October, beginning of November, it's not gonna work. I promise it doesn't work. Um, so, that's me kind of being as harsh as I can be. All right. Um, the rest of this, this I think is a really neat um, 
experience. You know, you, you get to do policy research. Um, you get to actually develop things that will be useful for society. Um, to that end, you know, if you want to partner with a group, a uh, nonprofit, government agency, civic organization, whomever, advocacy organization, and do research on their behalf or alongside them, that is totally great. We encourage it. Um, you know, in, in some cases in the past, we've had someone do uh, basically wrote up a plan for developing their own, their a nonprofit um, in support of uh, black maternal health. Okay. Um, a person and, and this organization now exists. All right. And that's going to be one of the, the capstone papers that you get to read, you know, to kind of base your, your product on or kind of get a sense of what we're looking for. Um, another one uh, was written by Saran Cade, who was the uh, Secretary of Labor for the state of Delaware. Um, he's now in the Office of Management and Budget. I think he's, he's the Director of Management and Budget. Um, but at the time, he was writing about a, po a policy problem that existed in Department of Labor at that time. Um, and it had to do with um, uh, workers being misclassified as contractors. Uh, so that they didn't have to be paid, you know, one above the table, um, but have proper taxes taken out, proper, uh, uh, you know, insurances and all of that sort of thing. Right. Um, so, you know, he developed some policy that later got implemented by Department of Labor. Um, so those are the sorts of things that we can do, you know, and I think there's really value in connecting these projects to the real world, you know. So if there's something that you care about, we can make it work, all right? Um, so the last thing I'm gonna show you is an outline. I do provide an outline and I say it's a rough outline um, and it's a recommended outline because as you start getting into the process, you might find some sections need to go in a different place, right? Uh, sometimes the sequencing might be a little bit different than what's proposed here or sometimes you might find there's an additional section you need to really explain something. Okay, so there's some flexibility, but this is kind of the rough outline we're gonna start with. Um, so we'll have a front piece, title, title page, table of uh, contents, tables, figures, appendices, all that fun stuff with an executive summary. You've all written executive summaries uh, in this program, you know, one page kind of um, explaining what you did. You write this at the end. All right, so usually you do your executive summary after you've written the whole document. Uh, introduction, right? So your introduction should have a problem definition, your research goal, a uh, little bit of description about why you're doing the research, right? What prompted it? Um, and then current policies in place that deal with that problem or don't or contribute to a problem. Uh, second section is your policy overview and background. Again, kind of really detailed description of the policy in its local context. Um, and then your literature review. Um, you know, what, what does the literature say about this problem largely? Uh, then we get into a couple of policy proposals that come from the literature, right? You wanna kind of borrow ideas as much as possible. You wanna cite them, but you wanna borrow them, right? We're, we, we don't need to invent the wheel. I think a lot of the policy problems that we've identified have been solved in other places or could be solved by policies that are already kind of in in the works. You can come up with something. You can totally invent a new policy. That's great. You're allowed. Um, a lot of times we in the policy world uh, leverage, you know, ideas that we borrow from, from peers, right? Uh, you know, Salt Lake City, Utah, of all places, um, has had lots and lots of success dealing with homelessness because the city has adopted a housing first policy for homelessness. You know, so if it works there, right, that's great evidence for us, all right? Um, you'll set up your analysis plan, right? So setting up those evaluative criteria, like I mentioned that we did in the MPA 602, and then kind of talking a bit about how you're gonna use them, okay? Uh, and then potential outcomes, you should remember all this, right? What, what are the potential outcomes for each criterion? What will you be looking for? And then you do the analysis, right? You do what you said you're gonna do. This is probably, I think the easiest part because you've already done all the legwork. Um, 
the implementation plan. Okay, so you've come up with a recommendation. How do we do it? Right? How, how should the state of Delaware implement the policy that you're describing? Um, what needs to happen? What resources are going to be needed? And how are you going to pay for it? Really important to think about how we're going to pay for it. Um, and then finally, conclusions, weaknesses, trade offs, implications. Um, and then, you know, of course, back matter, uh, complete reference section. Um, and appendices, if you have, you know, big graphics, tables, charts, what have you, go in the appendices. So I just spoke a lot. Um, does anyone have questions? I just have a couple questions. Will an IRB need to be completed for this? No. No? Okay. Um, um, oh, sorry. Uh, so we, I think I'm glad you asked that. One of the things that I do have to mention, um, and I didn't mention this, hard to believe there's something I didn't mention. Um, a lot of people think they're going to do surveys for this research. We're not going to do surveys. Uh, we don't have the time or the money or the, the resources to do surveys. Um, you know, survey based research takes sometimes years. Um, and so, you know, what we're going to be doing is borrowing data from existing sources. So no, you won't need IRB for that. Okay, perfect. Um, what other formats, if any, will the capstone be completed in? So even maybe just some like logistics around the oral presentation, like I know this is an online program. So will we have to come to Delaware? Will there be song and dance? Will I have to do like a Broadway number? Like what aside from the paper will I have to do for, for the capstone? Bonus points for a Broadway number. Um, <laughs> So we are, we, we are located in Delaware, um, but we could do a presentation of defense in this format, right? We can do it over Zoom. It's what we did throughout the pandemic. Um, and it would be just like this. Um, you could share your screen with your slides or you can send me your slides and I'll run your presentation for you. Um, but we do it just like this. Um, so logistically, you'll submit your capstone paper to your readers, um, give them a, about a week, week and a half, two weeks with it. Um, and then you'll make a presentation sometime in the week of in the week of November 15th. So you'll schedule that with your capstone committee, um, you know, once you identify who they are. That's something we do early in the semester. So we're doing a presentation just before Thanksgiving? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we want you to kind of have the Thanksgiving holiday without this hanging over your head. Are there other questions? Will we have a like a sample of like old presentations? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I will be providing you with with sample capstones, mm -hmm. uh, but I've also got a few really great presentations recorded. So I'll make sure those are, are up on the Blackboard site. everyone excited? Let's get to work. All right, no more questions? No, this is like my mama spanking me for three months, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you taking the time to hang out with us. Um, if anything comes up, if you have any questions between now and the start of the semester, feel free to reach out. I'm, I'm happy to take questions. I know Dr. Blackston is Absolutely. always, always mm -hmm. helpful, always willing to take questions. Um, so the rest of the night is yours. Everybody have a wonderful evening. You guys have a wonderful evening. And if there's anything that I can do for you, uh, as Dr. Burke had mentioned, he gave you a great deal of information. Uh, my role is obviously to guide you through the process from a tactical approach, making sure that you're meeting all the requirements uh, and you're writing effectively. Um, making sure you get that honest feedback. So if you have any questions or anything, uh, if you want to run an idea by me or anything of that nature, run it by Dr. Burke. Dr. Burke is very modest. He's done some wonderful research in terms of working with organizations, not just locally, but nationally. I've, I've done the same thing. And Dr. Burke is um, obviously on top of this. So we're both here for you and hopefully you enjoy it. And as I stated earlier, enjoy the process. It makes it a lot easier if you go in it and enjoy the process.
All right. Thanks, everybody. All right. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All righty now. All righty now. Bye bye.